and face tracker. I want to talk about face tracker. The tracker usually tracks motion. Now I'm going to go to the beginning here because it's, I want to start at the beginning. If I want to open up tracker, and the way you open up tracker is by going window tracker. If you look at tracker, you can track the camera when you're trying to uh, simulate uh, uh, 3D motion. If you have a camera that's moving, then you can uh, connect things to that moving camera to make it look like they're stuck to, into things inside the uh, video, which is really cool. So that you need a moving camera though to have that really work. You can track motion within here, like I could uh, use the track motion, click on this, and it would put a little point here that I could track, let's say, the motion of this eye, for example. And you can stabilize motion and use warp stabilizer as well, a couple different ways to, if you have a shaky camera, you can stabilize motion. So those are the typical features that you find inside Tracker. But there's a new feature that came out in 13.5 called the Face Tracker. And the way you turn the Face Tracker on over here is to add a mask. So I showed you about adding a mask before when you did the vignette. You'd use the same process here. You make sure that the layer is active because you want to apply the mask to the layer. You can go over and get the ellipse or rectangle. It doesn't make a difference. You're just going to generically select, say that, that the thing inside here is a face. So it doesn't have to be really exact. So I grab the ellipse tool. And I, when I draw an ellipse, I typically start like upper left and go down lower right, something like that. And then that draws the ellipse like so. If, hold, if I don't let go yet and hold on the space bar, I can move it around like so very easily. If you haven't worked with an um, uh, ellipse before or a shape tool before. And even after the fact, you can move it around. But that has now told After Effects that this is where the face is. I've not really defined the face, but this is, I'm telling it, here's where the face is located. And once I add a mask and the mask is active, take a look at the tracker. It's changed dramatically. All of those four things are gone. Those four buttons have disappeared. And now there's a drop-down list. And I want to track the face tracking. There's an outline version and a detailed version. We'll go with the outline only to begin with now. I want to track the outline of the face. And uh, you may wonder why I want to do that, and I'll show you why I want to do it in a second. So to track the outline of the face, which actually goes relatively quickly, you just click on this little track forward button there. You can track backward or forward. So we're going to track forward here. Click on that. And it should, hopefully, there it goes, take on the shape of the face. And it is now tracking that. Notice how the, the mask is adjusting for the shape of the face. And I wish that the little progress bar down here let me know where I am inside the particular video. It doesn't show that here, and I think that's a little bug because I know it has shown it before. So it would normally have a little thing indicating, you know, how the progress of this thing. And But, you know, that's a small thing. I can kind of tell how it's going by just watching the video here. And I'm going to let it go a little bit farther. But notice, as he moves around, the points there on the mask change to accommodate the, the motion of his face. See how it goes and moves along like that. It's creating keyframes for all of those little points. And the way masks work when you make keyframes is that uh, they don't keyframe each point, but they keyframe the whole shape at once, basically. All right. So now I'm going to stop this by clicking that again. And that actually did most of the clip. Now you can see that it follows his face. Pretty amazing, actually. And notice how it you know, changes the whole shape of the mask as it goes down like that, which is pretty cool. But we don't want this disembodied head floating around, right? So the way you typically work with this is that you take the exact same video and put it below that video that's masked. So now I have the masked version on top and the unmasked version down below. And <clears throat> so the, I can apply effects to one or the other of them and to cause uh, the, the, his face to stand out in, in particular. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a blur to this bottom one just to show you a way to do this. I'll type in blur here in the effects and presets search. Here we are. And I'm going to use a blur that, uh, like fast blur, which allows me to repeat the edge pixels. Because if you don't repeat the edge pixels, you get this kind of edge around there like that. And I'm going to blur the background a little bit. Now, I'm going to blur it more than it should, but I'll this way you can see what's going on. And now you can see that you know we've blurred the background, and his face is obviously looking weird, but that's the beginning of the process, right? But I'm going to keep it really blurred like that on purpose for a moment just to show you how this works. Okay, and uh, I want to have his face not be so sharp-edged. And one of the cool things about the mask is that you can feather it. So we'll feather it a little bit, so it kind of blends into the blur a little bit. And we can expand the mask if we want. This expands it overall uniformly. So I can expand a little bit, perhaps just to take a little bit more around, like grab his ears a little bit more, like that. And now I'll take the blur so it's not so terrible. It's ridiculous at 48. I can bring it down to maybe like 5 or something like that. Just a little bit of blur. 
like so. And now his face is in focus and everything else is blurred. Now it's still like it's probably too much blur. I'll change that to let's say six. If we were trying to be, you know, subtle about this, that would be the way to do it. I'll show you the, this is the after and then that's the before. And I'm not sure how well this shows up on your computers at home. It's, uh, you can sort, I'm looking at my laptop here. Yeah, you can sort of get a sense of how that blur works there. And you also might want to, you know, have him pop off the screen a little bit more by, let's say, adding a uh, curves effect to that kind of background. I'll type in curves here. Curves. And I'll apply that to this clip on the back as well. And I'll darken it up a little bit, like so. And that, again, gives us a chance to kind of highlight his face versus the background. So that was one reason you might want to do that. And you can also then fly, apply effects to his face. You might want to warm it up a bit, like uh, just give it a little bit of an orange or kind of a feel to it to kind of just make it a little bit warmer, whatever you want. But now you've separated it out from the background, basically. And that face tracker did that automatically, and I think that's phenomenal. And so uh, feel free to use that little feature. I'm going to delete all that hard work we just did and uh, keep the background video here on, but I'll turn it off the visibility on it. We'll work on the top layer again. Now I'm going to use the other option here, so I'm going to add a mask again. So back to the beginning here like that. Grab the ellipse tool again, and we'll just uh, highlight his face again. And we'll go to the detail version here. So notice again, once I make the mask, this thing changes. Go to the detailed view like that. And I'm going to click on the forward button here and watch what happens in just a second. Hopefully it'll, there it goes. It shows all these various points which is remarkable. It's looking at three parts of each eyebrow, the middle, left, and right. It's looking at three areas in the eye. It's looking at the pupil. It's looking at the nose, the mouth, obviously the outline of the face. All sorts of features are being recorded here uh, with keyframes on all those things. And you, know, you may wonder, wow, <laughs> do I really need to keyframe all these things? But uh, you can use this on an animation on something else besides uh, the video if you want to. You can, let's say, turn him into like more of an animated figure. Uh, there are multiple ways to do that. Or uh, you can attach things to his face, such as, let's say, a mask. I mean, I'm, by this case, I mean a, a mask that you would wear at Mardi Gras, something like that, cover up his eyes. Um, you can, other things, you can put a patch over his eye. You can attach things to his face that way. I'm going to do something that uh, he's going to just hate in just a second, but I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. So that has now created these these uh, keyframes, and I'm going to stop now. Obviously, it's not done yet. It takes a long time to get this guy to the end, but I'll press this button to stop it. And there are the keyframes. We got halfway through, so it follows through. It follows his mouth, and it looks like it's moving, but it's just that it takes a while for the video to catch up. And I'll open up the uh, face track points here, and it says one, two, three, four, five, six different track points. But in fact, there are track points inside the track points. So for left eye, there are six different track points within the left eye. It's insane, really amazing, right? So I'm going to show you a little trick here about how you can connect something to a keyframe, a set of keyframes using an expression. I created a course on expressions for uh, blue effects, so you can always check that out. But what I'm going to do here is a very simple way to do expressions. So I'm going to put on the background here so you can still see the background while we're at it. And we're going to work on him. And I can soften the mask again just as I did before so it's not so terribly obvious. So I'll go there and we'll kind of soften the mask up a bit. We'll feather it a bit so it's not so terribly obvious like that. Okay. And now we're going to go back and we're going to work only on uh, the uh, left pupil here. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to add a, um, a layer here. Right click. Say new solid. And when you're going to do the thing that I'm about to do, which is work with the lens flare effect, you want to make the solid black. That's one little trick we're going to do here. That's because we're going to use a blending mode called add. And now I want to add the lens flare effect. Lens flare effect looks like that. The lens flare has a center. You can move the center around, change how the lens flare works, right? Lens flare works, right? I want to connect the center to the left pupil keyframes. And I do that using what's called an expression. It's a very simple expression. It's just connecting one layer to another directly. So all I need to do is just turn on expressions. 
and the turn on expressions for a particular feature for a particular uh, feat, uh, um, option is to just press the alt or the option key and click on the on the stopwatch there. So alt or option click and that turns on expressions for that particular property and it makes the uh, keyframe values or the property values red. That's now turned on. And if you look down here in the timeline you see that you've got the same thing showing up here, little red things here and then this little box opens up. But all I'm going to do here is just make a connection. It's very simple. I don't need to type in any text here. I don't need to type in a formula. I use this little guy right there which looks like kind of a snail curled up but that's called a pick whip. And you're going to just drag the pick whip to the left pupil. So I drag the pick whip down to the left pupil and that puts in this obviously complicated looking thing. And now I need to say that I'm done so I click away and that, that accepts that. So now the lens flare will follow his eyeball which you know you don't see the eyeball right? But the way you, you can make it visible is by using what's called a blending mode. So right now this, this is the mode here. If you don't see modes just click on this little switch there. and It'll go from that view to the modes. It says mode but it's actually a blending mode. And if you go up to this drop down here, list here and go to add what add does is it makes black transparent. And so since it was black, now the black is transparent. And there is the lens flare on his eye. I'm going to take the brightness down a bit so it's not so obvious. Giving Brooks a, instead of a black eye, giving him a white eye. And now that will follow the motion of his eye. Pretty wild, huh? And not that I would necessarily do this, but I just want to show you how you can attach things if you do this kind of detailed face tracking. Wow. All right, <clears throat> so that's face tracking. And now I want to show you something else. 